how can companies in a similar domain, domain that are just starting up, um, how can companies like, such as yours benefit other businesses in terms of blockchain technology? Well, I, you know, I think there are, um, I think there are a lot of opportunities around uh, the enterprise, and so far we have seen uh, very little innovation. So far, most of their blockchain projects, they've simply stripped the money part out of it. They have things like Hyperledger, um, and most of the use cases are not really that profound. I mean, you hear very often talking about uh, farm to table vegetables and things like that. In terms of taking on very big business processes like, for instance, supply chain. There really hasn't been a lot of innovation today. There's some interesting reasons why, um, but I think the next 10 years around about uh, with the blockchain is going to be designed to solve business problems that existing businesses have today around the current processes that they that they have that, that basically drive how their companies operate. Where do you think we are right now with regards to the blockchain space? Do you think it's still very early days? Yeah, I think it's very early days. I think um, given the dramatic price decline uh, in these currencies, it's kind of, you know, sort of cast a shadow over the industry. If you look at it logically, uh, most of these coins are up, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 percent. So it's not unusual for there to be some consolidation. And it, it actually, the current currencies went up too fast. And I think that's kind of at least for the time being, it's lowered innovation, but I think for the long term, it's going to focus uh, both the people buying tokens uh, on quality and it's going to be, of course, a greater filter for those who have been bringing in money because I think there have been a lot of projects, probably close to 50%, that have just sort of disappeared. Um, and obviously, that's not sustainable. So, um, with your other businesses that you have, you've obviously been. Uh, be part of CNET and also co-founded um, Salesforce, as we mentioned. How could these companies, um, say, benefit from blockchain, respectively? Well, I, I mean, I don't think every company necessarily needs to benefit from from the blockchain. In fact, uh, a lot of these companies, um, I, I don't think, do directly um, uh, benefit from from the blockchain. I think. Uh, there are entirely new kind of class of applications in the enterprise, particularly around things like supply chain. Uh, all movements of money around the world, there's a huge amount of friction. Um, and so I think smart money can, you know, can make it so that, for instance, when a, when a pallet comes off of a, of a truck or off a ship, you can zap the QR code and release fiat money out of the cloud. These are the kind of things that I think we're going we're gonna to start to see. So I'm not a not huge believer that uh, it's going to change a lot of consumer applications. I think it's going to change a lot of infrastructure in the way things currently work. I mean, we're creating the first new video infrastructure uh, uh, since the beginning of the internet, um, and a lot of the innovation in video has kind of disappeared. But I think it's it's thing, tech, technologies like ours are going to create a, another set of uh, tools that businesses have to be more productive and to, and to operate uh, more expensively. Um, can you share your thoughts on where you think um, video coin would be um, in terms of its model or what plans you have for the medium in the long term? Yeah, I mean, so our, our goal is to um, go after directly uh, Amazon's most profitable business. People have not really been able to compete with Amazon because they've lost money in everything they do. Uh, and that's their business model has always been to lose money uh, and to push others kind of out of the way uh, because they had the capacity to lose money and, and others didn't. Um, it's a great strategy if you, can, if you can convince investors that it's a good one. Um, what's happened now is they've become uh, incredibly profitable around their AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Um, and they're really dominant along with Google in the the encoding, storage, and distribution of video. It's a massive business for them. It's a massive uh, business around the world. And by using uh, resources that are unused, kind of like Airbnb and Uber, only for computing, uh, we think we can cut the cost by 50 to 80 percent. So, um, you know, this is a business that has a lot of margin for uh, 
you know, for Amazon and Jeff Bezos is famous for saying their margin is my opportunity. Well, for the first time, Amazon's actually created an opportunity for somebody else to deliver a, a, a cheaper and more innovative solution. Um, let's talk uh, about um, cryptocurrencies and can you share your thoughts about them and where you can see them going in terms of popularity against, uh, with the masses, but also to see where you can see the price of Bitcoin, say, in maybe two to five years' time? Yeah, I mean, it's impossible to predict, you know, where Bitcoin is going to be. I think that uh, where, where, where very strong engineering teams that have deep industry expertise use cryptocurrency to solve business-related problems, I, I think you're going to find success. I think it's much harder for any of these currencies, at least the ones that have been created today, to be um, useful to the average consumer because they're fundamentally too volatile and, and people can't operate with a, with a currency that's not how they pay for their rent or their food or their child's education. So, you know, if, if somebody was living their life in Ethereum, um, you know, they might have been very happy uh, six months ago, but, but now it's, you know, a fifth of the value. And, you know, if they had, were using Ethereum, they, they wouldn't be buying food for their kids. And they wouldn't have a place to live anymore. And so, so I would never encourage uh, people to use these currencies to run their life. They're really designed to drive ecosystems and, um, um, uh, and really speculate in, in the same way that people in, um, in the gas and oil market speculate or people speculate on soybeans or other things. That, that's really kind of what these things are. They're, they're taking commodities um, and, and sort of buying and selling. Um, you know, in our case, it's really buying and selling computing capacity all around the world. It'll be driven by supply and demand. Looking at the bigger picture, how do you see the future of blockchain in the near future and beyond in terms of the technology implemented in businesses? Yeah, well, I, I think the technology has to start being more inclusive of fiat because that's how businesses operate. They have the same problem that consumers do. Uh, they can't take the risk and the value of their money changing um, their, their holdings. So I think we're going to start to see uh, fiat-based solutions begin to uh, emerge, and I think that's going to be, um, I think that's probably going to be the real tipping point for businesses to be able to take advantage of programmable money. And finally, do you have any final thoughts or any piece of, pieces of advice you could give for anyone that wants to implement blockchain in their, um, in their new business? Well, you know, I put, if, you're, if, if you're looking for a career, you should definitely look at um, trying to become a blockchain engineer. There's a vast opportunity to be able to do that. Um, if you're a company, uh, I think you need to start hiring uh, blockchain engineers early on because what happens is it is it because I watch this with the internet. If you're not employing people and thinking about stuff, the day that you do decide to do it, uh, you're going to be at a disadvantage from all of your other companies and competitors because no blockchain engineer wants to go to a place that doesn't have blockchain engineering. So I found this on the internet. We had a hard time getting people who knew internet technology if they were late to the game because who wants to go? work for somebody who's late to the game. It's, it's almost by definition, that's not a place that you should want to work. So, so the companies that always did best hired internet engineers the earliest, uh, built, up, uh, built up some expertise, figured out what, what worked and what didn't work, and, and most importantly, they were considered leaders and were able to get the better, uh, the better uh, technology and, and, uh, and developers as they, as they emerged. Um, just one other thing I thought about that I want to add in. Do you think blockchain is at the place now where, say, 20 years ago, Napster was with the music industry? Um, I think there are a lot of differences between, um, between Napster. Uh, I mean, fundamentally, Napster was about taking stuff without money. Um, and I think the blockchain is fundamentally about exchanging information and money. It's really those two things bundled together, the ability to distribute information and the ability to distribute value in the same pipeline. And I think that's really what's sort of fundamentally interesting about blockchain to me. Um, Napster was obviously a network that connected a lot of people, but, but their primary 
reason for being was to have no transactions and no money uh, moving, and that, that makes them very different from blockchain. Well, thank you so much for your time and um, all your expertise and thoughts, and thank you for joining us.